Hello there. What is going on everybody? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Battlestar Galactica Starship Battles. I'll be using the core set today and we're going to be looking at the quick start rules. The quick start rules are the most basic rules of the game to get you started and get you flying right away using only the most principal elements of the game. There are a lot of advanced and optional rules that you can also apply to your games if you choose to, but I will be saving those for a follow-up video. So if you are new here, I invite you to subscribe as well as click that bell for alerts because I have a lot of gaming content on this channel and I would love for you not to miss out on any of it. I also do a lot of giveaways, got a huge one going on right now for the 21st of December, so I'll put a link to that at the end of the video so you can check that out as well, but uh, you won't want to miss that for sure. So let's just take a look at how to play Battlestar Galactica Starship Battles. So the first thing you're going to want to do is assemble all of your components. You're going to want your ship on the base. It's going to attach right here. And you'll want it pointed towards the zero as opposed to the one. And you'll want your little arrow locking your ship facing that way. We won't be moving our ship this way during the quick start, uh, but that is for the advanced rules. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You're also going to want your control panel right here, which has a lot of different things on it. It's got your speed, it's got your kinetic energy, it's got your facing and your altitude. For this, we're really only going to be using the speed, but these are other things that can be used in the advanced rules. You're also going to have your range tool and your Viper card if you're playing a Viper, or your Cylon Raider card if you're playing the Cylon. Now, there are two Vipers and two Cylons, but for teaching you how to play, we're just going to go with one of each. Now the game can be played on any flat surface, but they do recommend a certain size. I'm using a three by three, three foot by three foot play mats, but you don't have to go quite that big. But for a quick start, just to learn the basics, any size will do. There are scenarios in this book of scenarios here, and each of those have different dedicated play spaces and suggested uh, sizes for your mats. But generally, any size is gonna be good. You want probably about three feet by three feet, uh, but you can go a little bit smaller than that. Uh, Ares does have their own specific play mats that are, are custom sizes for their boards. But I've got a lot of 3x3 three three mats, so that's what I'm using right now. However, for purposes of demo, uh, the size of the mat doesn't really matter because we're not going to be flying off of the board. But it is important that whatever mat you play on, that there are clear marks of what is out of bounds and what is in bounds. So if a ship were to flee the battlefield by flying off the edge, that you would clearly know that. The game also comes with these stickers that you can use to mark your dashboard and your ship. Uh, so I can mark A and A, blue A and blue A, and then red A and red A, etc. This will be especially helpful when you, if you have lots of different Cylon Raiders on the board or lots of different Vipers, you can help distinguish them. Uh, for now, I'm not going to mark them because I'm only using one of each. So every ship is going to have a deck of these hexagonal cards inspired by the show, so very cool there. I've got our Raider deck here, and I've got my Viper deck here. And the decks are going to allow us to plan, because the first phase is to plan your movement. And these decks have all sorts of different uh, card facings and different moves that you can do, and all kinds of different stuff. All right. And we can do different moves based on what our control panel says. So I'm going to take a look at this one, for example. Uh, we've got fast, medium, and slow, or low, medium, and high speeds, based on the number of arrows. We'll notice three arrows on number three there, two arrows on number two, and only the one arrow on number one. And that's going to sync up directly with our control panel here. Uh, we also have a backwards maneuver right here, which also syncs up with this part of our control panel. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these cards in secret. We'll lay it face down, and we're going to select the speed from our control panel. Now, if you look at the top, we have FTL, faster than light. We're not going to use that in the quick start, but that's one of the uh, one of the full optional rules that you can do where you basically can warp around a little bit. But we'll talk about that more in the uh, follow-up video. But we can set our control panel to high speed, medium speed, low speed, stand still, or go in reverse. And then we're going to sync that up to whatever card, uh, whatever's on the card. Now, it's important to note that if we set our control panel to stand still, we're still going to plan a card even if it doesn't, even if there's nothing for it. Uh, and that's just to deceive the enemy. So we'll still plan a card in secret and then say, ah, I'm doing this, and then we don't move at all. 
So how does movement actually work? So what I'm gonna do is, let's say I wanted to do a medium speed and I'll put it on the second arrow and I'll set this face down as well. So this is gonna be in secret and this is also going to be in secret. When we both move and movement is simultaneous, uh, where I'm going to reveal and I will go ahead and say, all right, well, I'm doing a medium speed and that will sync up to right here. And so I'm going to line this ship up. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to take the yellow line and line that directly up to the notch directly in front of the zero. All right, and that should, there's a little indentation for it to line up perfectly. And then I will move the ship to where the back little one, see there's this little yellow one, that lines up with the yellow right there, and I should fit perfectly in to the bracket, and that's where my ship moves to, just like that. And now if I were to go backwards, it would be the same thing, I would line up the yellow to the backwards arrow, and slide that into where the, the yellow of that notch lines right up to the yellow of that notch. And because these aren't actually fully circular, it should line up perfectly with the grooves in there. And that's how we do our movement on these cards. You can also play an overboost card, which is this symbol right here, with the big, the big arrow. And what that is, is that's kind of like a really fast maneuver. And if you select an overboost, you're actually going to go ahead and select two cards. And you'll, or you, you know, as soon as you reveal it, you still let you reveal your second card. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to potentially play two cards in a row and you can follow this line. So, so you still would set your, your speed here. Now you can't do over boost unless you're going forward. So you have to be going le uh, low, medium, or high. And, uh, and so we, if we were going medium, then we could go, you know, follow this and go all the way through there, basically doing a little bit faster of a move. Now it's important to note that a lot of those type of moves will also have a G value. In this case, the G value is three. Uh, and in this case, the G, G value is one. So whenever you're playing two cards, you cannot exceed four in this particular mode. So if I wanted to go ahead and play these two, because this is a fast, you're, you're moving a lot longer here, like look at you doing all this crazy swanky stuff. Um, we would add those values together and that's three plus two, that's five. And for the quick start, we cannot do that. So uh, four is the cap for adding two different cards together if you're going to do uh, an overboost. And the last type of maneuver card I want to talk about is the difficult maneuver, and that's this symbol right here. And if you do a difficult maneuver, you cannot do a difficult maneuver the following turn. Um, and also on top of that, if you wanted to play two cards after doing a difficult maneuver, you can't unless the, like in other words, if you wanted to overboost, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to play this as an overboost after doing a difficult maneuver, uh, but I could play a straight overboost, but it would have to have that symbol on it. Um, now, this isn't actually an overboost, but yeah, if you had a straight overboost with a forward symbol, you could do that, but basically, uh, after doing a difficult maneuver, you're generally stuck doing just one card unless it's an overboost straight, and it can't be another difficult maneuver. Now, if two ships were to overlap, uh, and bump each other, you can't actually be physically overlapping. So you'll actually refer to their control panels. And what will happen is uh, whichever ship was the faster of the two movements, that ship would fly forward until it no longer bumps. Uh, you can either use the ruler to push it forward or you can use another one, uh, basically a straight template to determine that. Uh, and uh, they won't be able to shoot each other. The idea is they're trying not to hit each other. They can't shoot. And that's basically all there is to it. Now, if you're going the same speed, uh, you just randomly decide. So you can roll dice or flip a coin or however you want. Uh, but then the winner will just go fly slightly for farther forward so that they're not overlapping anymore. And the last movement related thing I want to talk about is illegal maneuvers. If you made an accident or maybe you, you, you picked a, uh, a tile that didn't have a backwards maneuver on there and you went ahead with a backwards maneuver, what you do in that case is you just, uh, you have to remember what your prior movement was. You're going to pick out your one straight or your basic, you basically your first maneuver card and you're going to revert to the speed you were a previous turn and just go straight. So if I went from medium speed to backwards, uh, then I'll just do a, another medium speed straight, and then I'll take a damage. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about damage, but the uh, damage markers look like this, and they have random numbers underneath them, so you'll take a damage. So you definitely don't want to plan an illegal move because that could kill you. 
So we've talked about planning and we've talked about movement, but it's time to talk about shooting because shooting is the most action-oriented part of this game. First thing you're going to notice is that these ships have a very narrow firing arc. You see, it's just that little triangle right up in here. So it makes precision planning and flying very, very important because you really want to line up those shots. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to gather this handy-dandy tool right here. And this is going to help us find our targets because they can only be so far away. Our guns don't shoot forever. And range is also going to be important. I also want to point out that this tool has two different sides. We will not be using the side with the X for this game. So if you are have it set to that side, let's flip it back over. We want to use a side with three colors. First, you're going to notice red is close range. Orange is medium range. And yellow is going to mean somebody has that long range from you. So just for reference, I'll put this Cylon Raider right here. And this guy would be at long range, but just barely there. And you are going to line it all the way up to the post. You're going to stick it all the way into the post of the ship. So... Uh, basically, we would line it all the way to there. And that's where we start measuring from. Uh, you're not, you don't want to start from here. You want to go all the way in. And that's how you determine range. But they also have to be within your arc. So you can't go like that or anything like that. You'll just want to make sure you line it up just like so. And like, oh, look at that. I have, oops, wrong side. I have a shot on the Cylon Raider. Uh, and, and now this is where the plus and negative dice are going to come in because you're going to roll two dice to see if you can hit them. So what do we want to do when we're rolling dice? Well, we want to reference our ship card here and we want to reference the attack value. Now in this game, they actually make it kind of simple because both ships have an attack value of six. So to get started, it's going to be a little bit simpler. And that is the number that you need to meet or beat in order to score a hit. So how will we do that? Well, let's, let's line it up. So I set up this example where I'm flying in from the side and maybe I outmaneuvered my opponent and they don't actually have a shot on me because their front arc is pointing out this way. But I can see quite clearly that from here to the Raider, I definitely do have him in close range because if any part of his plastic is in the red, which a lot of it is, I can take a close range shot. Now the plus one on this means that I'm going to be able to add one to my results. So if I were to roll a five on two of these dice, when, and then we add the totals together, if I roll a five, and I, oh, I rolled a six, so that's going to be a hit regardless. But even if I rolled a five, I would be able to add one, and it would be six. And since that is my attack value, that would count as a hit. So what happens when a ship is hit? Well, they're going to be drawing from a pile of random damage tokens. And these can have all different values. Um, we could have a value of maybe one, uh, and we could have a value of maybe four. Uh, we could potentially get a uh, five. And uh, look at that, there's a plus symbol on there. Sometimes some, uh, it'll have a plus. Plus means you draw one more. And if the, uh, if the other one has a plus two, you don't. So like this would be eight. You also notice some of them have symbols on there. We're going to ignore those symbols for this for the sample game. Uh, that is going to be part of the advanced rules. But so if you see those, don't worry about those for your first couple of games until you get into the more advanced rules. Now, those damage numbers are going to be important because if at any time your damage meets or exceeds your structure value, your ship is destroyed. And uh, if you got no more ships on the board, well, your side just lost. So that's basically how you win the game. Blow up everybody's ships. Put enough damage on them. Now that damage is going to be adding up quickly, so you want to try to dodge your opponent's shots if you can. Now damage is going to stay face down right next to your control panel. You're allowed to look at it, but it's secret from your opponent. So I might see you with four damage tokens, but hey, maybe they're all zeros because there are zeros in there too. So you you never really know if it was just glancing fire or if you actually did some damage to the ship. So that's kind of an interesting mechanic of it. Although it is interesting that you, they could have potentially uh, a lot more damage than they're letting on. And maybe you just don't know. But you will know what their value is because the structure value on the card is not secret. So in this example, the Cylon Raider is going to try to attack a fleeing raptor. And it might look like we've actually got a shot, but we do have to line the tool all the way back up to the center pole. And since it does not actually hit the plastic there, he wouldn't actually even have him in range, so it would be no shot. So look, for purposes of just doing a shot, we'll go ahead and push him back a little bit. And let's just say for demo purposes, all right, he does have him at long range. Now the long range shot whoops, means that he's going to actually have negative one to his roll. So the Cylon also has an attack value of six. So he needs to roll six. 
and he rolls five, and uh, the minus one makes that a total value of four. So uh, let's just say I had actually rolled six. Uh, then uh, that would have been six damage, which would have been enough to hit, but we get a minus one because of the distance and the difficulty in shooting somebody so far away. So that would count as a miss. So no damage token for the Viper. And that is Battlestar Galactica Starship Battles in a nutshell quick start rules. You don't have to play 1v1, you can play 2v2, you can control multiple spaceships, you can have a friend control uh, their own spaceships and everybody has one. If you've got multiple core sets, you can run as many ships as you want, just make sure you mark them all so you can tell whose is whose and which one's which. And that's it for the quick start rules. I will be doing a follow up video with some more uh, advanced rules and this game does have a lot more to offer so I want to caution you if you think that this is too simple this is just a tutorial to get people's feet wet there are a lot more things going on in this game if you play with the complete rules so I will be doing a video on that as well if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think down in the comments below if you love these models I'd love to hear about it I think they're gorgeous and I can't wait to see what you think uh, don't forget to also enter that Superstar Destroyer giveaway I have going on right now. I will put a link to that as well, uh, but you won't want to miss that because that's going to be amazing. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I also want to give a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are fantastic, uh, and I love you guys. You guys help make this all possible. So big thanks to all of you. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.